Hello guys and welcome back to this new episode. In this episode I'm hoping to fit all the glass in the cockpit. But before we do that I've got a few niggles that I've spotted since I turned the whole unit around. As you can see we're now looking at the front of it and that's because all the camera lights at this end of the room it's on wheels which is nice and easy to turn it round and then we get some good filming spots. So for the time being let's head down to your right, my left, and uh, I'll point out there's some things that need correcting before we go any further. So before we go any further, the first thing I need to correct is the back of this monitor. And just due to its own weight, it keeps falling back. And before I lose the monitor due to any damage, I need to find some way to brace it. And I think what I'm going to do is insert a piece of wood, top to bottom, and screw it in nice and easy. That's the plan. As you can see, here is the right hand breakout board. That too needs to be screwed back in position if I could find the screws. See this big bundle of wire here? All this wire here? I have absolutely no idea what they do. That's going to take a while to, to sort out, but we'll get there. Okay, for the time being, let's head outside. Make sure this up, get a bit of wire, get a bit of wire, get a bit of wood cut, and then hopefully that will just hold it in nicer, nice and firmly. It'll take the weight off. So before I head outside, a quick measure. So a little confession today, I left my set square out on the table overnight, and in one night it's pretty much corroded pretty badly. A little bit of sandpaper on there, but let's take a bit more care next time. Time for the moment of truth. 38.3, let's see if it fits. And the plan is, is to slide it in there. And slide it in there. Let's move it across a bit, more in the centre. And that should hold it quite nicely. So the support brace is in, now the back cannot move. I think what we'll do is we'll just add a screw in from the top, a screw in from the bottom, and that will be permanently held there then. To get the screws in from the top, I need to remove the forward window frame. And hopefully that should just be a couple of screws. The roof should still be self-supported, otherwise it's going to go horribly wrong, but we're about to find out. I love modular construction. Okay, so this time let's get these screws in from over here. So rather than go inside, remove the seat, the control column, and the rudder pedals, I'm just going to try and reach in through the gap here, drill it up through the bottom and then hopefully screw up the bottom as well. That's the plan, let's see what happens. Job's jobbed. So while I'm here, it's probably going to be a really good opportunity to try and get these breakout boards mounted back onto their stanchions. However, they are the tiniest little screws and I have absolutely no idea where they went. But, I could unscrew one of the stanchions. There we go. And see if we can find eight screws to put the left and right breakout boards in. I've managed to find some tiny two millimeter screws. I don't even know if you better focus that on camera. Just one. In it goes nice and secure and I think that's the board it ended on this side
board number two done. I think we'll get the window back on and then we'll start getting the glass installed. What I should have been doing from the start. And hopefully the window will go back just as easy as it came off. So starting with the front left windshield, I made a template first from the sizes off CAD Fusion 360 and I gave this to the glass manufacturer. Now normally I'm not ever too sure in the UK about getting the corners rounded but it's just a lot simpler to ask them to do sharp corners and it's a lot cheaper. So in that case where we've got rounded corners here, when I apply the template, we do actually need to chisel out some of the corners just to allow the glass to sit flat. And just as a warning, I made the glass two millimeters smaller in every direction to allow for any misalignment. And I'm certainly not going to be put using sealant to put the windows in with this time. That stuff was so strong that the glass broke before I tried to get them out last time. And as I still want to get in behind the windshield and do lots of electronics, I'm just going to hold them in with templated screws at the moment. But until then, let's get these angles cut out with a bit of chiselling and see how, see how it looks. So I've placed the template where I think I want it. Now I'm just going to draw around where we need to put a cut out. And that's it. Wow, just two corners. The upper right, lower left. Let me go and see if I can find a sharp chisel. than I was expecting. Now in theory, this should fit in. And it does. Let's go and get a bit of glass and see what happens. Here's the sheet of glass. It's three millimeters. I did intend to have 5mm glass, but I thought 3mm would just be a lot easier to handle. I'm going to see if it fits, and obviously some safety gloves on so I don't get cut. So it does fit, however, what we've got is a slight bowing of the upper sill here, and that's because of the sheer weight of the upper overhead resting on this 18mm rather thin section MDF. So what I think I'll do is I'll go outside and we're going to put an eyebrow, we're going to put a support piece of wood on here to help pull it back out and take some of the weight. Now can I get this back out safely? And disappointingly, I can already see that the glass has quite a lot of scratches in, in the surface. But again, this is Brunei, and it's just normally what you get. 
as you can see there's quite a bit of play in that so I think I might use some um, one and a half inch square stock to go on the top I think what I'll do is I'll just do one side at a time, get this one cut correctly to the correct angle, make sure it's good while this one's still mounted in the same position and then nail it together and then take the other one off and do the other side. I'm not going to show you the cutting because it's so dark outside you wouldn't see anything anyway. I'll be right back. I'm back from outside, I've cut the angle on. Let me clamp it now to the top of the window, bring the window out flat and then screw it from the inside out. And that's made it much more structurally sound. Of course I can always come back and trim this down to a more reasonable size should we say to make it look, to make it look not so obvious. So it now looks like the windows have got eyebrows. Oh well. Let's remove the clamps and make sure that this panel here stays nice and straight. It looks good from here. I'll remove these clamps now that this side has been marked up. I'll head outside, go and cut the angle, refit it and do exactly the same procedure. But this one seems to have a lot more bow in it. So hopefully this will look good when it's finished. Back from outside, put the final chamfer on. Well, that looks like it's done it from the outside. Let's head in and put some screws in. Let's see how that looks on the outside. So hopefully when I take the clamps off now, the window will stay in the exact same place it needs to be. And that's made the structure so much stronger. I should have incorporated that from the start, but obviously on the inside where it's hidden. Next time, version 4 perhaps. So, I guess it's time to put the gloves back on and see if uh, this window pane fits any better. Moment of truth. Let's do it. That's the glass pane in. Now we just need to make some tabs in the corners to hold it in position. Because I do not want to seal this one in. I always want to be able to remove the glass if required. Good morning guys. It's day two of fitting the glass panes to the aircraft. Behind me here you can see Fusion 360. I've made some tabs to keep the windows in place but I don't want to permanently fix them just yet. So these are a temporary device that allow me to remove the windows as required. They're all ready to go. Time to head out to the machine outside and start cutting. As you can see, the machine's finished cutting. It's now just a job 
of taking them inside and hopefully fitting them to the glass panes. Gloves on. Time to go and get the glass. Got a bit of play in this top left corner here, so I'm going to cheat and use some double sided foam. I've just applied a little bit of foam tape just to hold the window in. The window frames were designed for 5mm glass and of course I've used 3mm so there's 2mm worth of play. Ideally what would be nice would be now just to fit a nice foam seal tape around the outer edge just for a bit of cushioning of the window anyway but when I find some I'll get round to doing that. Time for the next window. Let's put the template on and see how far out we are. Oh, it goes in nice there and there. So there's a lot more to take out of this one, the corners go back much further. So in with the chisel and see if we can get these cut out nice and neat. Let's see if the window fits. Oh, actually, it went in. There was just this, this tiny little bit here that I was about to remove, but I like it when it's nice and firm and stuck in. That's good. When I made the corner template, I forgot that the glass was also leveled off and it didn't taper into a sharp point, so it doesn't quite fit. I'll have to come back and make another one for those. I know this is the wrong shape for the bottom corner here, but I'm going to use it just to make sure that the glass doesn't fall out for the time being. I can always come back and change it in a little bit. Now the top corner won't well, have a mounting bracket at the moment because it's a combined one that goes over both pieces. So out comes the template for the second window and chisel out that. And that will do. That's all three glasses fitted this side. Time to spin the sim around and do the other two. Okay, let's see if we can do some speed fitting. Get these last two windows finished for the day.
As you saw, I quickly chiselled out the rough dimensions. I've put the gloves on and it's time to see if the glass fits now. The glass does fit, but there's a screw sticking out, preventing the glass from fitting in flush. So I need to remove that screw. Not really the right tool, but it was the first one that came to hand and it's doing the job. Now the glass should fit. Bingo. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Not that way. Okay, stay. Well guys, that's all six windows fitted. They're secure, they're not gonna fall out. We do need some thin sealing tape just to take away the play to make up that five millimeters that they should have been originally. However, there are a lot of scratches in this glass already, so you never know, I might go and get it replaced. These six panes of glass here cost 25 Brunei dollars, which is about 12 and a half pounds UK. A lot of mess to clean up on the floor. Once that's done, we'll spin it around and we'll show you a close up of the windows. Time to turn the sim again, so I can clean some more of the other side up. And with the glass fitted, there's only one thing left to do, and that's to clean all the glass. And here I am sat with the sim in the right orientation again. All the windows fitted, and it feels much more encapsulated. It feels much more of a cockpit now. I really must get the aft overhead so I don't have to see the sky or the ceiling which is actually just our roof, obviously. Uh, but we are getting there. Uh, I need to get some sealing tape for the windows just to start take away the rattle. Obviously, as I said before, from three millimeters to five millimeters, I really should have just gone with a five millimeter glass, but it, it's big, bulk and heavy that way. I want it to be portable, and as you see, it's quite easy to move this, this whole unit around on wheels at the moment. I will leave you with some closing shots. I'll catch you later guys, it's been a pleasure. See you later, sim out.